I'm Patrick Sullivan. And I'm Ben Spence. And today, we're going to be interviewing Rick Hodge for the Pirate Podcast. He's been the coach here at Platte County for 20 years. Coach, how's your day going? It's going good. All right, we're going to start off the podcast with uh, the questions. Um, how does this team this year compare to your teams in you know previous years? Well, this team compares very favorably compared to what we've had in the past. Now, last year's team had a lot of success, but I think this year's group plays a little bit different style than what we did last year. This year's group's playing a lot faster. Um, they kind of wear teams down throughout the game. You know, I, I talked to some people about how when you play these teams that press the entire game and they wear you down at the end, we don't really press, but the speed at which and the intensity level at which we play wears teams down. And I think they play for a while, but I think you, you, as you see teams go up against this, you can see that they, they can't stay playing at that intensity level for such a duration of time. And I think this group kind of wears teams down as the game moves along. Okay, so this group this year is very senior heavy. How do you think um, they impact the team on and off the court? I think it's a team that the, others, the younger kids can look up to. Um, just how they go about their business how they're focused on success, um, the way they enjoy being around each other off the court, the way they enjoy playing together on the court, and how it shows um, just with their overall, the, the way they move, cut, screen for each other, and when they start sharing the ball offensively, they're really difficult to guard. And I really think that the younger kids see that. I don't know if they can, they try to emulate it. I don't, they're not as talented to emulate it, but at least they can see what's trying to accomplish and, and how you're trying to go about your, your offensive and defensive game plans. So Sean Davian Bradley, you know, a junior, he's had a big role this year. How has he settled into that role? Sean Davian's improved a lot, not just from a year ago, but from the beginning of this season. Um, he, he impacts, there's been games where he's taken over inside, down around the block, um, off the bounce. And then when he steps out and hits a three ball. And then I think his, his defense has improved also. You know, we were on him a lot this summer about his defense. And it wasn't good enough and it needed to improve. And for a kid of that, with that athleticism and that length, you have to be a lot better defensively. You should almost be just a shutdown defender. And he wasn't. And we stayed on him. We talked to him about it. But the thing I like about Sean Davian is he'll listen. He'll listen and he, he wants to get better. And Sean Davian has grown so much, not just from last year, but from back in December. And it's, it's on both ends of the floor. And, and when he attacks the offensive glass or works hard mid-post into, into the block region, um, he, he, he's a slasher as well that can take guys off the, off the bounce. Um, we're still working with him on when the right time is to take people off the bounce and, and when it's not. Um, but we've been very pleased with Sean Davian's development. Um, we've been very happy, and I, and I don't think he's reached his ceiling yet. I, I'm, we're happy to have another year with him uh, that, that he's going to continue to improve. So I kind of want to talk about the environment at the home games now. So mm -hmm. how has that like, been different this year than it has been in previous years? Well, the environment, first of all, the environment's been tremendous. The, the, the support we get from the student section is amazing. And the energy they create helps, because I talked to you guys a little bit a bit ago about how we play at a high intensity level and we play fast. And it's kind of funny because I think that gets the student section going also, and they enjoy watching that brand of basketball. And I was talking to somebody about it too the other day, the way that, you know, if we were to come out and play slow and pass the ball around for a minute before we take a shot, uh, I don't know if we'd have as many students in the stands because you could still win, but it may not be as enjoyable to watch. But I think we're not only, we're, you know, we're winning a lot of games, but I, I think this is a fun team to just sit back and watch play because of the, the speed and the intensity level at which they play. And I think that kind of gets the student section going, and it also gets, uh, which, which in turn gets us going, and we feed off of that crowd a little bit. Uh, the community has been great. I mean, the, the crowd that we've had for Pack the House night against Ruskin that was on TV, and then the Smithville attendance, um, we're so happy to be playing in, in a great community like Platte County. Um, how is it different from in the past? Well, 
before last season, we, we weren't having this success, so we didn't have as big a crowds. Last year, we had success, but we were fighting the pandemic all year. And we were fighting the, you know, two people or four people per uh, player, and it was really limiting our crowd. We had no student section and all that. Um, so we're just really happy that we can pack the house this year and we can get the student section because I do believe this these would have been the crowds last year if we were allowed to do it by this by the health department. So this is your uh, you know second twenty one season in a row. How are you going to try and continue that culture on through the next years? Well, what we're going to try to do, uh, and I honestly I haven't thought a whole lot about next year. Um, we're pretty focused on what we need to do. From here on out with this group, we'll start putting stuff together for next year. But, you know, we're not going to get wrapped up in that. One thing, you know, as a, when, when you coach the high school level and you're not recruiting, you're, you're playing the kids that come up through your high school. And that's what we'll be doing next year is playing the kids that we have. And, and, and the only thing we look to do is, is kind of try and fit our coaching style to the group that we have and try to improve every day and just get the most out of the kids that we have uh, wearing our jerseys and what happens as far as number of wins and things or, or championships um, we don't really get wrapped up in that we and it's, it's, that's the same thing with this group here we're just trying to find out where are we weak where do we need to improve and just keep getting better even at this point in the season so how do you feel about um, moving into a new conference next year which has been you you're moving out of the suburban blue conference which has been very powerful so how do you feel about that well, again, we haven't really put much thought into it. We've been uh, dialed into what we're doing this season and with this group. As far as the new conference, the thing that's going to be a struggle for us is just familiarity. You know, it's it, coming going from the MEC to the Suburban Blue. We had to get familiar with all the teams. We had to change how we did things. We had to change how we defended because of just the pure athleticism in this conference compared to the MEC schools. And there's going to be adjustments to the teams we play next year. Now, obviously, Raytown's going to be very, very athletic. Uh, we saw how athletic Belton is. Um, and I think that we're going to have to make some adjustments to that. Um, and there's going to be some learning curves for us as well as we um, get familiar, become familiar with other teams in the league. So, obviously, you guys got playoffs coming up on Saturday. What, what, are, your, what are your goals for playoffs this year? Our goals are just to continue to get better, even at this point uh, in our season. We just want to continue to improve. I still think we're, we're weak in areas. Um, what I want to see is offensively, better ball movement, sharing the ball at times. When we bog down at times, when we take quick shots or silly turnovers. And I still think defensively we, not, we need to get better. Um, we keep talking to the kids about there's, teams are going to lock us up and there's going to be nights where our shots aren't falling. And how are we going to grind through those games? And you have to rely on defense and rebounding to do those. And we still got to get better on the defensive end. Okay. So how do you think um, team chemistry has impacted this season? The team chemistry has been very good. And, and, I, and you see it with them off the court. You see it with them on the court. And I'm a big believer in that. You know, if you have a group of kids that get along and enjoy being around each other off the court and hang out at each other's houses or go eat Taco Bell together after practice or whatever – you see it on the court, um, the way they enjoy being with each other, playing with each other. You see it with movements and actions. Uh, ball goes to one side. They're cutting. They're slashing. They're driving and kicking, and they enjoy kicking to each other for three balls, and they take pride in assists and things like that. Um, and when you do that, it's an enjoyable brand of basketball to watch. So to wrap up the podcast we usually do you know a final four which is just four quick simple questions that we ask um, Go ahead. don't always have to do with basketball or sports so first question what was your favorite part about playing college basketball just the relationships again you know i had the same you know i had the same one of my teammates was my roommate for all four years of college which is odd. Usually people don't stay with the same person for four years. They get sick of them. But he is now a high school referee. And we chit-chat. We still, to this day, talk on the phone every now and then. And he'll talk about officiating, and I'll talk about coaching, and we throw things back and forth at each other on what each other see or are thinking. Um, and so, and then I still, one of my teammates lives in uh, Liberty with me, and, and I I still see him at, at uh, different games and things like that. So you still take that away. You know, you got 
you have high school friends that you stay connected to, and then they're kind of your friends for life. But then you have college ones too, and of course mine were teammates. Um, but the other thing then also would be when I was in college playing basketball, I knew I wanted to be a basketball coach, so I took things from um, you know the team and still implement them into our coaching styles today. So what is your favorite game to be a part of this year? Like, what's your favorite game this year? I would probably say that Smithville game was pretty high. And, and, and you know, it, we we played well, shot the ball well, but just the overall atmosphere of that gym. The, 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 the amount of people that Platte County community brought out, Smithville community brought out, the student section brought out, um, the band being there, just all of it, that whole environment was amazing, and it's something these kids aren't going to forget. And even if you're in the student section, you're probably not going to forget that game for long. And then, of course, when you when you win, that helps also. Uh, and so when we were to win, win and, and um, clinch a conference championship on our home floor in front of our community, um, I, I would probably say the Smithville game stood out. What is your favorite class that you've taught in high school? Um, you know... I don't know if I have a favorite one. I, I, there's certain aspects of health that I enjoy in the classroom, talking to the kids about um, when it comes to like mental mental health, emotional health, that type of stuff. Um, how to improve your overall mindset? How to because uh, we got so many kids in the school that do struggle with with things like depression or anxiety, um, and talking about things like that and ways you can help them. Uh, but then also the PE aspects that I've taught over the years, whether it was PE class with the team sports that I enjoy. Um, you know, we used to have a power walking. Uh, we have a power walking class now, but we also have, used to have a power um, football, power basketball class. It was more of a team setting, and I don't know if I have a favorite one, but, but I kind of like moving around and doing different things. All right, so for our last question, what is your favorite type of music to listen to? Um, I don't know if I really have a favorite type of music. I like different songs. Uh, they can be different genres, different eras. Um, and if it's a, a beat song, uh, then I like listening to it, whether it's some country, some rock, some rap. It just kind of depends on the lyrics a little bit. And um, as opposed, I don't really listen to just one type of music. I, I go more by the by the song, I guess, if that makes mm. sense. Yeah. All right, that'll wrap up our podcast. Thank you very much, Coach Hodge. Um, good luck in districts this weekend. Thank you. I appreciate that. Come and watch us and support us.